There has been a massive shift in public opinion and public policy. Laws have been changed, businesses have been changed, healthcare institutions have been changed. How did we get here? We got here because of parents who teach their kids to stand up for themselves and for others, not to stand by or walk by on the other side. Parents who set an example by ensuring that all their relatives and all their neighbors are welcome in their home and at their table, no matter what religion they practice or race they represent or who they love. How did we get here? Because of teachers who believe in their students, all of their students, and who ensure that schools are a safe place for every student. How did we get here? We got here because of human rights commissions who spoke out for changes in the law to give protection to LGBT people. Courts where judges took seriously the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Rights and freedoms not just for the majority, but also for those often too afraid to speak out or stand up, too afraid of losing their church or synagogue or mosque or temple, too afraid of losing their families, or worst of all, losing their families and their friends. How did we get here? We got here because of brilliant and generous lawyers like Douglas Elliott, who took on human rights cases pro bono, making our legal advances possible. How did we get here? We got here because of politicians less concerned about the polls and more concerned about what is right, less concerned about, about what some radical religious group might think, and more concerned about what they themselves would think when they looked themselves in the mirror and when they looked their grandchildren in the face. A grandchild who might be gay or lesbian or not, but who would be able to say, my grandmother or my grandfather stood up for what was right. How do we get here? We got here because of some religious leaders, certainly too few, but some who said we need to differentiate between personal belief and public policy, who said we once made a mistake by misusing scripture to support slavery. And just like we once misused scripture, or continue to do so, to support a second-class status for women, or denying interracial or interfaith marriages. Instead, some religious leaders said that God is a God of love and justice, a God of freedom and equality. How do we get here? We got here because one by one, someone stood up and said no more. They stood up in the classrooms and workplaces, legislatures and churches and homes. Some were gay and just wanted to be free and still be loved. Many were not gay, but had family and friends who were, and they knew it was their turn to do the right thing. How did we get here today? So many acts of courage by so many people, often not recognized, too often punished. Yes, I've worked hard. I've had to wear a bulletproof vest on a number of occasions because of the death threats. I've been beaten by the police, I've been assaulted in my church, I've been unable to leave my home at times without a bodyguard. Even today, I sometimes don't answer the door unless I know ahead of time that someone is coming. Even today, the front window of our home is covered for security reasons. However, I've also been blessed by amazing support and by many awards, and now this honor today. Yes, I've worked hard, but that's not really how we got here today. We got here because of those acts of courage by people all across Canada, most without recognition, and for them I proudly receive this honor. There is still much to be done. Gay kids in classrooms, Muslim kids in schools, Jewish kids in schools, black kids applying for jobs, disabled kids hoping to be included, and poor kids just hoping to get by. I remain optimistic because people are standing up and speaking out. I remain optimistic because of people like you entering the legal profession, entering the business community, entering the health profession. Leaders like you who will ensure that the battles and the victories of the past will result in meaningful differences in people's lives, where they live, and where they work, and where they go for healing, and where they go for justice. There is an even better future in front of us, 
We have work to do for there are 68 countries in the world where all of us in this room would be arrested for being in a gathering which includes openly gay and lesbian people. In 10 of those countries, I would be executed just because of who I am and who I love. We have work to, to do to ensure that equality in law becomes equality in practice. We have work to do, and sometimes we will shout across the barricades. And more importantly, we will reach across the divides. Yes, we must name injustices wherever we see them. However, if we demonize the opposition of the day, then we will unnecessarily block the victories of the future. The choice is always between building a barricade or building a bridge. It is amazing how powerful it can be when a one-time enemy becomes a friend. I know how blessed I am. I know that throughout history and throughout the world today, most of my people couldn't even have dreamed of this day being possible. Full equality in law, an amazing church, a partner of 28 years, a supportive family, a university like York, and an honorary degree for my activist work. Graduates, congratulations on achieving this milestone in your lives. Now we have a world to change. May people all around the world continue to see a beacon of hope called Canada, this amazing country where a gay activist can receive some of its highest awards. And may many people come from around the world to attend a beacon of hope called York University. Congratulations, graduates. Happy anniversary, York. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.